There we saw oh, two beans. Two beans. Fantastic. The circle oh, is we closed. Made we made it in the anti-clockwise direction. Oh. All the way through from the last stretch from point one to point eight. They really deserve this applause. Welcome to the LSC News. Today we are in the CCC, the CERN Control Center, where on September 10th, 2008, the LHC dream became a reality. After 20 years of planning, R&D, and construction of components all over the world in physics labs and industry. Never in the history of physics had a particle accelerator started up so quickly and so smoothly. The proton beam accomplished its first tour in the clockwise direction in just one hour, and the second tour was successfully completed two hours later. This was an absolute record. It had taken LEP, the previous accelerator in 1989, 12 hours to accomplish what the LHC did in just 50 minutes with much more sophisticated components. But what makes the LHC so complex? The LHC is complex in itself because of its size, but it's complex also because we were forced here just to use a technology which was not established technology, but we had to just invent this technology. If you compare this uh, type of uh, scientific enterprise to, to a space enterprise, in space you have the tendency just to use a well-established technology because you don't want uh, just to risk uh, failures. Most of the technology we have used for this, uh, for this uh, accelerator was not existing, starting from magnets and continuing to the fact that cryogenics was extreme in this case because we needed just to use superfluid helium. This is the largest installation uh, of cryogenics ever tried by the mankind. Let's now ask an eyewitness what happened to the LHC after its first beam those 11 days of last September. So we had a wonderful start with beam on September the 10th. Um, as you know the world's press was here and things went very well and for the next two days things progressed uh, better than our wildest dreams. I mean we had circulating beam and all the instrumentation, the machine was behaving very well. We then ran into a series of technical problems over the next week or so. Nothing too serious but it stopped us working with beam and while during that period we carried on with magnet tests so we were getting the, the machine ready to take the beam up to high energy and in the last sector, sector 3-4, we were increasing the current to the 5 TV, just above the 5 TV level. And on the 19th of September, this test was taking place. And um, as you know, this is when all hell broke loose. And we had this serious problem in sector 3-4. In our technical infrastructure section over here, they got hit with a flood of alarms from the oxygen deficiency hazard warnings, from the electrical supplies in, the, in, the, in that sector. And then we realized that we had a very, very serious problem and the cryogenics group rapidly diagnosed a, a serious helium leak into the tunnel and uh, that's when we knew we had a big, big problem. But what actually went wrong in sector 3-4 of the LHC tunnel on September 19th? Lucio Rossi, head of the LHC Magnets Group, gives us the details. It went wrong what we call the connection here to this superconducting cable. You see, this is the real cable actually carrying the real current that generates the magnetic field. This cable, superconducting cable, can carry up to 12,000 amps. You should imagine another magnet nearby here, just exactly with the same configuration, with its own cable coming on this side. The cable are connected, are connected here with the splice, such a way that the current can flow from one magnet to the other. You have to imagine that the resistance of this connection, of this splice, is very small. It's one billionth of a, of a home. Ohm is the measurement of a resistance, it's very small. Uh, here we have one billionth of a ohm of a resistance um, when it is done correctly. Unfortunately, probably there is one where the incident happened that uh, went wrong because the resistance was 200 times larger. So too large and basically it melt out and completely uh, to the level that probably here the conductor and the copper, stabilizing copper, melt out and really the conductor br broke and at a certain point, an electric arc developed. And such a way, when in electrical machine like the LAC, with the energy that we have in the magnet, you develop an arc, we are done. We lost two magnets, the two magnets nearby, and because of the pressure wave of helium 
this you have to imagine, this is closed and there is really superfluid helium inside. Because of the electric arc, this, uh, this enclosure is perforated, it's perforated and so helium can come in the vacuum chamber and at a certain point helium is very cold, gets immediately hot and immediately expand, generating a wave of pressure that really did a lot of damage to many magnets. So it was an electrical interconnection, exactly like this one, between two superconducting magnets that melted out during electrical tests on September 19th. There's actually 20,000 such interconnections between superconductors, all of them with record-breaking performance requirements. This melt-out is what created the leak of superfluid helium, which damaged 53 dipoles, exactly like this one, 53 out of 1,232 that make up the 27 kilometers of the LHC machine. So how did CERN react to the damage and where are we now with the repairs? Francesco Bertinelli, the LHC engineer in charge of the magnet reconstruction, tells us about the repairs plan. There are several actions that are taking place in parallel. There is a very, very intensive surface activity where we are rebuilding magnets that then have to be tested uh, and completely validated before they are lowered in the machine. Today about 20 magnets are already in place. There is interconnection work ongoing in the tunnel. And in parallel there is consolidation activity everywhere in the machine to implement a system to detect this kind of short circuit in time before it becomes indeed a source of catastrophic uh, short circuit. Uh, we will finish probably the transport of all magnets sometime in April. We will finish the interconnection work between magnets sometime in June and we plan to finish and validate uh, the whole machine by September. To know more about the LHC repair progress at CERN, follow our monthly updates on this space until bin time.